Antonio, well, Dr. Webb. When I first met him, he was Antonio. He was one of my students. I was the principal at the middle school that he attended. Three of Louisiana's biggest cities all rank in the top 10 of a dubious list. New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Shreveport rank as the fourth, fifth, and eighth, respectively, among the deadliest cities in the country. Driving brings back a lot of uh, memories, kind of growing up and uh, running these streets, getting into trouble, causing trouble, hanging out with uh, people that weren't necessarily up to you any good. And um, you know, every time I come back to Shreveport, I'm just reminded of kind of where I came from and where I started, and look at where I kind of made it to and kind of really blessed to make it out of this you know, environment. I had several family members that went to prison starting with my little brother who was sentenced to a juvenile life sentence for armed robbery when he was 15 years old. Um, my younger sister did time in prison as well as my mom who's been on and off drugs my whole life who was actually shot and is paralyzed from her waist down uh, due to her drug addiction. My dad, when he was younger, um, he sold drugs and used drugs, joined a gang, um, and there was actually one time where he was uh, committing a burglary and the cops shot at him and the bullet uh, just missed his leg by a few inches. Uh, but my dad turned his life around, became a minister, and uh, is my role model uh, to this day. My dad drove down from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana to be with me uh, today, and I want my dad to stand up. Well, I grew up in California, in San Diego. As an only child, I got with the wrong crowd and spent time incarcerated as a young man. Uh, I was able to change my life, and, and I would I would say that Antonio, growing up in Shreveport, at one time, he, he kind of leaned toward with the wrong crowd, but I thank God he got with the right crowd, and, and I would say that I'm very proud of Antonio. He's accomplished a lot, and where he is today, I uh, I'm, thank God for him. It's a blessing to have a son that's like Antonio. So. I can't think of no more to say that I'm very proud of him and I'm looking forward to a bright future and, and seeing him go forth and do things because he's always been a giver. One thing about Antonio, he'll give you the shirt off his back and he would go, he would go the last mile of the way to help people. So it's a blessing to have a son like Antonio Webb. All right, so we are in the uh, area of Shreveport where I grew up, um, spent a lot of time here with my uh, grandmother who lived in this part of town. And when my dad was trying to take care of four kids by himself, we would go to my grandma's house all the time. And every time I went to my grandma's house, she would always remind me to uh, stay out of trouble and to um, basically stay away from you know all the bad things that were going on in Shreveport. So we're gonna, I actually haven't been to her house in a while. We're gonna go by her house right quick. And um, so Queensbury has always been a uh, really rough uh, side of town where um, a lot of gang activity, you know, drugs, um, a lot of bad things can happen really quickly. And, you know, a guy that I kind of grew up with and um, was friends with me and, you know, my close friends and family members. He was actually killed at this this uh, school up here like, multiple years ago. So we're, we're going to roll by here and uh, check it out. So she lived on uh, Abbey Street. This is a uh, very street where she lived at. And you can see 
see some, a lot of the houses are, you know, not well kept. Uh, a lot of these are shotgun houses as well. What's a shotgun house? Shotgun house is a house that um, you uh, look through the front, you can see all the way through the back. That's what a lot of these houses are in this area. So, it's right up here. So this is the house I grew up in right here. One of them. This house right here, 1822 Abbey Street. You know, coming here, it brings back a lot of memories as well as, um, you know, it just reminds me of the, the struggle kind of day in, day out uh, that uh, people go through living in situations like this. But um, yeah, this is, uh, this is Allendale, Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, not only uh, did I know Dr. Webb, but I knew his brother, Jonathan, and I knew his sister, Nicole. They all went, uh, went to, it was Hollywood then. This was back in the, uh, I would say, mid-90s. back, And this was when gangs were prevalent. And uh, Antonio, um, Dr. Webb really lived, it, we, let me put it like this. Vision uh, inner city school that had nothing. No books, no good teachers. But when I came, when I became the principal, we turned it around. Uh, and I was afraid that Antonio would uh, well, Dr. Webb would get caught up in one of the gangs, and you had uh, the Crips, the Bloods, and the Pyro. And it was it it was it was easy for a, a youngster those days to get caught up in a gang, but he didn't. They tried to recruit him, but it didn't work because. Uh, me having the connection with his dad, I had my eyes on him at school, and his dad had his eyes on him in, in the neighborhood. So, and, and I'm really, really proud of him from where he came. He came from the bottom to the top. He made it. He made it. He made it out of that community, and he made it out alive. And you don't understand the number of students when I was principal there that I had to bear because of gang violence. But I am very proud of Antonio, and I'm proud of all of my students that became something and made something out of themselves. I think hearing all these stories about, you know, the gangs, sin, people get, you know, hearing about people getting killed. You know, I was at a um, store right up the street one day and I saw, walked up and saw a, you know, the yellow kind of tape like everywhere, I guess. You know, some dude got killed, and uh, it was just crazy because everybody was just walking kind of by, and uh, like it was nothing, like it was normal. So um, that, that was the, the, the kind of environment here in Shreveport, and uh, kind of the vibe when I was growing up. So I'm in the uh, back house of where 
Uh, I spent a lot of time growing up, and uh, my grandma used to rent these rooms out right here. So people would drive around, you know, walk around to the back. This is the back portion of her house, and each of these were rooms. This floor doesn't look too steady and sturdy enough to walk through here. You can see that the, um, someone kicked down all the doors, but uh, this is where she kind of, uh, you know, made some living renting out these rooms back here in the back portion of her house. Yeah, so this is a uh, this is a shotgun house. So it's a house that you look through the front door, you know, you can see all the way through the back. Um, this is like two houses down from my grandma, and uh, we used to you know run up and down the street and uh, play right down here. There's a park up there we used to go to. There's a candy lady right up the street that we used to go get candy and, and uh, you know food and snacks and things like that. But uh, yeah, this is this is you know one of the houses that. Looks like someone used to live in, but not anymore. Yeah, so, you know, seeing stuff like this here, I hear somebody screaming, and that, that's kind of the, um, there's a lot of mental health problems here in Shreveport, and uh, you'll see people walking down the street talking to themselves or, you know, uh, acting really weird, and um, you know, that's pretty common to see, but I like places like this, coming back to places like this because uh, it keeps me grounded, it keeps me humbled. I don't care how much money I make, um, I'm always going to remember, you know, growing up in a, an environment like this. So um, I, I think that's important to uh, stay grounded. How you doing? Oh yeah, the crime. I ain't gonna lie, it's just like crime like all over the world, but you know, you can get you can get pretty roughed up here in Shreveport. You just can't really just look at it like it's a place that's like their country, but yeah, you can get pretty roughed up. Oh yeah, you know, we do blood and crips here. You know what I'm saying? Because I have one son that's a rolling 60 crip, I have one son that's a pirate blood. You know, they come out the same room, so basically that it's like U95, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, very deep into that there. But now that, you know, God is sending a positive message to all the gang members, you know, it don't matter if you're young, old, blind, crippled, crazy. You know, instead of we fighting against each other and fight together and pull together and stand as one, we could be more unified. We could be more powerful than Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, you know, Nobel Priest by people that, you know, started picking up a gun in the night, they picked up a book. I love to read books. You know, I had a lot of books here. People just walk in the house and take whatever they want when they want. And, you know, sometimes it causes me to get very angry, but I just sit back sometimes and I look. I just look at my God and my higher power, which, you know, to God with many names, no name, I lie, don't mean nothing but God. My higher power. Everything going. Okay. Man, everything's going good, man. Just taking it one day at a time. Yeah. I got 113 days left in prison, man. Been gone almost three years, you know, so I'm ready to come home. I got a chance to see my mama. The last time I was able to see her was 2019 of February. Yeah. And uh, got to see my sister and Gabby and Brady, you know. So that was really good. I haven't seen them in about two years. You know, I'm just so proud of you and, and, and the track that you're on, man. I know, I know where we started from. I know I've never been on the side of the road selling watermelon. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. You just, you just go, you've always excelled yourself, man. I, I can't, I'm just so proud of you, man. You've been being the youngest manager at McDonald's. At like 16 years old, you running the whole McDonald's. You know, you, you never gave up. Been denied at Georgetown three times. Been, just persevered, man. Uh, I respect your humility, your, your perseverance, your determination so much. Yeah, and, appreciate um, it, man. Yeah, well, well, yeah, man. 
What, what kind of advice, you man, you give the people, man, that, uh, you know, heading down the wrong path, man? You know, because I, I don't want people to end up, you know, in prison like you, man. Well, what type of advice would you give? Right. Man, my best advice to give them is before you do anything crazy, ask yourself, is it worth my freedom? Yeah. Man, you can't put a price on freedom, man. Once they take your freedom away from you, it's it. The only thing that you can control in prison is your mind. Yeah. Ain't nothing about prison what's up. Everything that you heard bad about it, multiply that by ten. Just living in here, waking up every day. Man, having to be basically a, 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 a servant. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And I can't put a price on freedom. Just speaking for myself and my family, I, I can't put a price on freedom. I'm, I'm just blessed to have have people that's been there for me this whole three years. So I can go on. And I, I can never see myself putting them in a position that for them to even have to go through this again. So even if it was something with me, I, I would never put them through this again. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, just, I, just, I just think them youngsters need to just, you know, Focus, man. Yeah, you know, even if you don't stay in school, get a trade. Do just, just don't settle for the streets, man. Yeah, that's, that's all I can tell you. Yeah, well, well, last minute, man. Um, growing up in Shreveport, man, can you talk about like some of the things that you saw and people were doing crazy? Oh man, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a survivor city, what I call it. Everybody in Shreveport will tell you, if you can survive in Shreveport, you can survive anywhere. I've seen so many homeboys disappear. You know, as I ride through the city, I can, as I'm passing streets, I can be like, man, Bert got killed over there. Yo Yo got killed over there. They shot Tony up there. You know, it's just, it's just so much stuff that goes on out there, man. You gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be a soldier for real. And it's just, yeah. it's, it's a blessing for you to make it out of there. And yeah. be a and be an orthopedic surgeon. I mean, it's just, it, it's just a blessing because I know where we came from. Yeah, we just showed I, I went left, you went right, cuz. Yeah, that's the only difference. That's the only difference. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it, cuz man. Ain't, that, ain't nothing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love you, boy, and uh, right. I can't wait to see you, man. Man, I love you too. All right, bro. Peace. Okay, I already 113 more days, man. This thing over with, you heard me? Yeah, almost home, man. Already. All right, man. All right, Peace. Cuzo. Peace. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, you know, uh, just talking to my cousin who's been in prison for, you know, the last three years. He has 113 days left. Um, and I, I hung out with him growing up every summer. I was at his house. You know, we were in the knee deep of, you know, bad things in Shreveport. And like he said, he took a left, I took a right. It couldn't easily have been me. So I'm um, really blessed to kind of be in this situation. Unfortunately, he had to spend time in prison, but, uh, you know, hey, hopefully hey. his message will inspire people hey. to don't take that path. Straight up out the block, where it's hot, where it's hot. Bombs in the streets, where they rock, where they rock. Air full of heat, everybody try. I don't think they see what I made it out. Trees, poor streets, do my diddy bop. I dedicate my life, now I'm finna pop. See, I don't waste no time on a silly op. Silly op. There's a lot. I've been getting money, but I'm giving back. And I always tell people, no matter kind of your surroundings, your environment, um, however you were brought up, um, you can be successful as long as, you know, you believe in yourself, you work really hard, and, um, you know, you find people that are in that particular field, mentors, people that can guide you along the way. And that's kind of the reason why and what inspired me to uh, start my YouTube channel to encourage others, showcase different specialties in medicine, different um, professionals, because you can't become something that you, you don't see. And, and uh, I didn't know any black doctors growing up here in, in Louisiana. The people that I looked up to were the drug dealers, the dope boys, and um, I started making decisions that uh, were not really good decisions because of that. So I think it's most important to understand that you have to believe in yourself. You're gonna have people, the naysayers, the haters, people that are gonna tell you that um, you, you can't become a doctor, you can't become a lawyer, you can't become a teacher or own your own business. Um, you know, those people told me the, the, the same thing. 
And actually, I've had a lot of people kind of laugh in my face when I told them my plans to become a doctor. Uh, they called me names, called me a nerd, but I always tell people that um, it's okay if people call you a nerd today because tomorrow they'll be calling you boss. And um, that's the philosophy and my way of thinking along this, uh, this, this journey. I think it's important that you have to first believe in yourself, keep telling yourself that you can do it, write it down, take a picture, uh, hang it up on your wall, your car, constantly tell yourself that you can do it. And if you really believe that uh, deep down inside that you can achieve something, you'll eventually achieve it. I would say that he's a, a blessing to the world and he's a, a gift from God and I, I never dreamed that I would have a son who's accomplishing things as he's accomplishing, so I'm very proud of him. It's just hard and writing. Right now, my, my, my heart is, is heavy because he turned out to be the best. He didn't let anybody change his mind. He had it, like my dad would always say, He's never seen a person going down the street with two heads on his body. So, he, in other words, he was telling me to do my own thinking. So that's what Antonio did. He did his own thinking. He may have talked about him. Father said, he's not going to, he's not going to make it. He'll be back. I know he, I know, I know they made com comments like that. Because they made it about, about me too. But looking at him today, I am just as proud <laughs> as ever. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for everything that you've done for me too. <laughs> My main goal is to encourage individuals from communities like mine who grew up single family homes, broken homes, who don't have a father figure in their life or you know, brothers on drugs, using drugs, selling drugs. They don't have role models that they can look up to. I want people to look at me, use me as motivation. You know, When you're going through life, you're trying to reach your goals, trying to get to med school, trying to get in law school, business school, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, you know, there's thousands of people before you that did it. And I always tell myself that um, if people before me did it, um, I can do it also. So. I encourage you to follow your dreams. Uh, failure is not in the falling down, it's in the failure to get back up and try again. I've fallen down hundreds of times along this journey, but um, each time I got back up. The hardest blow won't ever take me down. The strongest thief won't ever take my crown. Yeah, held it down for so many for so long. Yeah. But now I'm taking time for me. Can't nobody grind for me. The hardest blow won't ever take me down. Yeah. The strongest thief won't ever take my crown. Yeah. Held it down for so many for so long. Huh. But now I'm taking time for me. Can't nobody grind for me.